I'm Chuck Qualla, former Senate Majority Leader. And I'm Scott Jensen, former Assembly Speaker. And we're the insiders. So Scott, Margaret Farrell passed away at 87. She was the first woman Lieutenant Governor, a variety of other things. Uh, both of us served with her. I served with her in the Senate. Uh, what's your take on Margaret's uh, legacy? You know, I was struck by one of the things her son said in the newspaper the other day when he said she was mom first, but a public servant after that. Um, I would argue that in the almost 30 years in which I either worked for or served with uh, Margaret Farrow in one capacity or other at the Capitol, she was mom even in public service. Um, when there, people were fighting, she was the one who would sort of break things up and tell them to knock it off. If, if there were people out there who were misbehaving or perhaps uh, stirring the pot, she was the one to give them that you know, stern look that moms seem to master uh, very early on with kids. And as someone who had four boys, um, she, she was very, very good at that. So um, I, I think she was uh, well suited to politics. She loved ideas and she loved people. And that's a great place to be if you wanna be in politics. She, she was always uh, on the cutting edge on all sorts of different public policy issues. She was always trying to move ideas forward and she was always trying to help people move forward. She was mentored to a lot of up and coming people in the Republican Party, um, including uh, Rebecca Clayfish, who followed her later as Lieutenant Governor, um, Leah Vukmir, all sorts of people here in the Waukesha County area count Margaret Farrow as one of their mentors. Um, and she spent a lot of time in helping a lot of people with all that. So um, I think she was someone who had a, a sharp mind and a big heart and both those are gonna be missed. Well, the Margaret Farrell history is an interesting one where I served with her. I was one of very few people who voted against her to become a Lieutenant Governor because the Senate was required to do that when Governor Thompson left and Governor McCallum appointed her. I actually, that is one of the few votes I regret. And by the way, that is not because I in any way feel that Margaret Farrell was a good public policy maker in the sense that I felt that she represented her district, a lot of very wealthy people, and that was what she did. And there was very little concern for people who didn't have means or whatever. And I, I did not like that at all. And I felt she would not make a good governor. However, I've come to regret that. In fact, within a few months of that vote, I regret it because I was taking a look at the bigger picture of the branches of government, the legislative branch and the executive branch. And I came very quickly to the idea after I had done this. It's not about, Chuck, what you and your colleagues on the Democratic side feel about the policies that Margaret Farrell might produce. It's a matter of the distinction between the branches. And the executive branch has a right to have the people that they want in place because they were, and even though McCallum wasn't elected, and even though Margaret Farrell was not elected statewide, and McCallum was as part of the ticket, they were really electing Tommy Thompson. However, when the people express that view, whoever that successor is, steps into the shoes of Governor Thompson. And Governor McCallum had the right to appoint the person he wanted, who he felt would reflect what needed to be done. I felt that I made a mistake on that vote, and I was one of very few who, who voted that way. So my Democratic colleagues were actually much more on this than I was. But doesn't mean I agreed with her policies, but I saw the, the, the change and how I should be more respectful of the independence of the executive branch. So I look at this and I say, I'm happy that she was had the opportunity to serve as the first woman lieutenant governor and, and the leadership that she provided when, within the caucus, which Scott discussed, which I really don't remember. But I really think one of the things that I learned in that process is you need to be respectful of the other branches of government. And that's something that uh, Margaret Farrell taught me. You know, um, she also was very Wisconsin, I think. You know, she, she grew up, I think, in the Kenosha area, as I recall. Um, she uh, lived here in the Brookfield and Elm Grove area later. Um, but she was a musky fisherman at heart. Um, I still remember there's like the, one of the most exciting things she ever got to do when she was Lieutenant Governor is McCallum sent her to the governor's fisher o fishing opening um, and she won the contest in the, in the uh, musky fishing category. And you know, you're just supposed to be a politician at those events. She actually fished and won at that. So um, she really enjoyed Wisconsin's outdoor life. She, uh, at the end of her life, she was over here in Lake Country. Um, she just really, um, she enjoyed all of this all the way up to the end. So uh, it's a, she was a remarkable public figure and the state was, was uh, really honored to have her. 
She uh, she certainly leaves a legacy that'll be remembered. And I think uh, her her insider stuff with the Republicans, I did hear about that, although not in the detail that Scott did. And I think that that's something that's memorable, especially for the Republican members of the Assembly and the Senate who served with her. We'll see you next time.